Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, December 29. 390 farmers operating in Little Park, St. Elizabeth are now benefiting from a newly commissioned solar-powered pump station worth $53.14 million. The Little Park F3 pump station project by the National Irrigation Commission, NIC, was commissioned into service recently. 500 hectares of farmlands are to benefit from the project, which is also expected to reduce the station's energy bill. Little Park is the NIC's single largest energy user and operates for 20 hours each day. The installation is a 200 kilowatt grid tied solar system, which allows the Little Park pump station to self-generate 37% of the energy requirement for the pump facility. With this upgrade, the NIC's annual bill from the Jamaica Public Service Company is projected to be reduced by 20% or some 9 million Jamaican dollars. The installation of the solar pumping system is phase one of a three-part upgrade that will see the total capacity of the pump station increasing to 350 kilowatts, thus further reducing operational costs. It also complements the NIC's installation of solar pump systems at Bengal in Trelawney and Ebony Park in Clarendon. Residents in and around Beltier in St. Anne are now finding it easier to breathe thanks to the installation of an 800,000 US dollar water reservoir. The pond has been retrofitted with a submersible pump, making it easier to distribute water to dampen the earth, thereby preventing the dust buildup from the Naranda bauxite plant nearby. The commissioning of this um, rainwater harvesting facility that holds approximately 17 million gallons of water to be able to provide water to dust, to, to wet the roads so that we can keep down the dust nuisance, so that persons in the surrounding communities who have been complaining for years will now have a chance of having less dust. Mining Minister Robert Montague was speaking last Tuesday at the official opening of the Beltier Water Reservoir in St. Anne. Minister Montague says the facility will cost Noranda less by eliminating the process of trucking water from Discovery Bay to wet the roads. Still in St. Anne, 400 titles are being prepared for handover to persons who have been relocated due to the Noranda bauxite operations in the parish. Mining Minister Robert Montague made the disclosure recently as he handed over five of 25 land titles that have been prepared for Brownstown residents. Minister Montague says the titles represent a new thrust in how the ministry is dealing with titles for Jamaicans in the bauxite industry. Today, as we hand out these titles, I know it is going to make a difference not in the, only in the lives of those who get the titles, but it's going to make a generational difference. It is going to affect how your family acquire wealth going forward because this is the beginning of building a dynasty. So what Naranda has done here in, in this partnership is to begin to build generational wealth. In other news, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett has welcomed Sandals International Resort's $240 million US dollar investment in local tourism projects. The Sandals Group has committed to build a new property to replace the demolished Jewel Runaway Bay. They will also complete Phase 1 of Sandals Royal Duns River and expand Beaches Negril in their 2021-2022 plans. And the latest commitment was realized recently with the opening of the 84-room Sandals Royal Caribbean in Montego Bay. Minister Bartlett says the investment is proof of the hotel chain's belief in brand Jamaica and the future of the tourism sector. This is happening during a pandemic. It's happening when we are managing uncertainties at a level we never managed before. And it is happening also at a time when many areas of the world are conscious of their own inability to do things, while Jamaica is expressing its ability to do things. And I think that's a huge and powerful position for us to be in as a small nation. And finally, Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark has commended healthcare professionals who have been working on the front line of the national COVID-19 response program. I just wanted to single out members of the medical profession for this morning, uh, the Nurses Association of Jamaica, the Medical Doctors Association, the Midwives Association of Jamaica for the 
amazing uh, response to the pandemic that you and your members have undertaken this year. Minister Clark was speaking at the latest Heads of Agreement signing with the unions and bargaining units representing nurses and midwives in the public sector. Dr. Clark said Jamaica's health system has experienced an unprecedented crisis sparked by the pandemic, which also triggered significant economic fallout. He pointed out that amidst the challenges in public health, there was no work-from-home option for nurses, doctors and midwives. It came at a time when many of us who were thankfully not ill were at home. And you had to be out in your uniforms, as the case may be, tending to the sick and to the infirm. And on behalf of a grateful nation, we say thank you. Nurses throughout the period have had to be at the forefront. And even when others were able to relax a little bit, the nursing fraternity, and I speak for the midwives also, we have still had to stand and be there. We had to find ways of taking the service to our women who were in lockdown communities. And that's it for JI's News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching.